Hiya, this is, um, I'll try and make it as quick as possible, a quick tutorial on how to um, set up PBR texture maps in um, the Cinema 4D Material Editor. Um, so you might see, if we go down here, if we go to Create, we have New Material and New PBR Material. So um, PBR stands for Physically Based Rendering, um, and it's a method of shading and rendering that kind of provides a more accurate representation of how sort of light reflections, uh, luminance is kind of affected off that um, off that particular material. They also can be uh, named or referred to as physically based shading as well, so a PBS. Uh, but um, obviously, Cinema 4D here reacts to them as a PBR material. So um, how can we create these and how can we implement them into not just um, Cinema 4D, but also uh, Unity. Um, and I might make that a second part um, of this tutorial, but um, for now, uh, what we can do is look at what we've got here. So if you go on to Chrome, this is a little information, I'll link you to this, I'll put this in the description. Um, it's all about what PBRs are and what you should be doing and how to control them. So what we're gonna do is, as you can say, I'm already on a website looking at um, different kind of textures. So um, here we're looking at Texture Haven, really good website for free textures. And as you can see, these are essentially made for uh, AAA photo realistic looking games. So um, in one of my other um, channels at the moment, or not channels, one of my other series, I'm creating this kind of Victorian looking um, Gotham by Gaslight, that's quite a good picture actually for it, Gotham by Gaslight kind of themed um, Batman Gotham City. Um, and this is exactly how I'm going to create um, all my textures and I'm going to make everything essentially in um, <clears throat> Cinema 4D and pass it over because it really it just gives more of uh, realistic photo, realistic looking graphics. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna click on textures and let's have a look what we've got. So we've got some real, so really loads of different things that we've got here uh, and that we can manipulate. Um, so let's have a look. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. I want something that's quite jumpy outy, so that rock is quite nice. These curves here, let's go with, let's go with a nice kind of ground or rock or, let's go with this, let's have a look at this. Okay, so um, it's really nicely uh, laid out website by Texture Haven and what we can see here is that we can download all the maps or you can singularly download each one from their website. Um, Depending what you're doing, I'd always just say it's just easier just to get the whole thing. So if you click all maps, and then 2K should pretty much do it. Um, I usually stick with PNG. PNG usually have more, uh, a lot more contrast and uh, color kept in with the image, unlike JPEGs, because JPEGs are a very flat um, image. So what I'm gonna do is download the PNG. As you can see, I've got all my files here um, and I'm just going to save it into my C4D materials, click save and that creates a zip folder. Let's find that zip folder. Do, 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 do. There we double click that and that's trash. Cool. Lovely. So we'll worry about those in just a second. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to try and get this texture on a sphere like they've got it kind of presented here. And what we're going to do is go to Cinema 4D. I'm going to add a sphere. I'm going to make the radius around 250, so it's a little big, a little bit bigger, and create our segments to about 100 segments. So it's nice and clear looking. Awesome. That looks quite nice. Cool. So now we can start to create our PBR material. So as I showed you before, go to create a new P PBR material and then we can double click. Um, so as you can see, we've already got, it's a little bit different to a normal material where uh, only reflectance is checked. Um, and there's certain places where um, certain materials need to go. So 
Um, we can look at color first. Um, so if we check color, and um, what we're doing is uploading these textures, aren't we? So first thing we're going to do is look at where texture needs to go, and we're going to find our color map. So essentially, the the image that looks most realistic. So uh, let's go looking. Let's go to our not cobblestones. Let's go to our rock, which we just downloaded, and that is a ambient occlusion. We don't need that. It's our bump. That's our diffuse. That's our displacement. That's our normal. Um, let's have a look. Where is our, there? We go. We'll take our diffuse. That will work fine. So if we click open, no. Nope. And there we go. So at the moment, we still haven't got everything else attached to this. So it's not just going to, it's not just one texture. Um, we need to map this all together and put all different things together. So at the moment, this isn't very bumpy. So what we're going to do is go straight to displacement, check displacement. And under texture, we are going to find our displacement. There we go. That looks good. Let's just make sure that is our displacement. Yep. Click open, no again, there we go. And we can start to see a bit of a bump come out here. So what I'm gonna do is start to push the height up until maybe, let's try 20, there we go. So we've got a little bit of a bump of line here. Maybe it's a bit too bright, bright because of the color at the moment. We'll get rid of that when we add our roughness. So um, I believe we had a normal map, so we can check that as well and find the texture for normal map. There we go. No, cool, fantastic. Ah, here we go, starting to get a bit more detail now within our PBR material. I believe it had a bump as well. So let's search bump. Or did bump come under normal? Oh no, there it is, bump, open, no. Cool, adding a little bit more detail there. We could even pump up the strength if we feel it's necessary, let's just put that to 100. So you can see some real nice textures coming from this as well now. Um, let's look at uh, diffusion, check that. So with our diffusion, we need to find our ambient occlusion. So what I'm gonna do is search for this and our ambient occlusion is right at the top. There we go, open. No, awesome, you can see again, every time we're adding these different layers, it's adding a different texture and this kind of photorealism with this material. Okay, so reflectance is probably the most confusing one. There's a number of things you can do um, with a uh, reflectance, um, or the reflectance material and what goes on to the reflectance is um, a roughness or a rough map. Uh, or roughness map, doesn't really matter. So um, what we're gonna do, because this is gonna be a rough texture, obviously, because it's been a, a rock texture, what we need to do is uh, set the type of material that it's going to be. And at the moment, it's a diffuse, and I want to set this to a, a, G, um, a GGX, okay? So that's coming up with quite a metallic look, don't worry, because we haven't added the map yet, we need to add our texture. And as you can see in um, layer color, We've got texture that we can add. So let's go to texture and find our roughness. There it is. Add that. Click no. Cool. So that's calmed it down and also a little bit of the color is poking through now as well. Okay, so reflecting strength is quite high. So we should add that down. We shouldn't we really need any of these at all, so specular I'm going to add down, rough reflection I'm going to add down, and roughness I'm going to add up to 100. And as you can see now, this texture is really starting to pop out. One of the last things you can do is make sure we, um, there's a Fresnel layer that should be hiding there, there it is. And we're just going to check that Fresnel layer um, so it says for now, and we're gonna make sure it says derelict. There we go. There we go, so there's more of a photorealistic look right at the end there. Okay, so I, that is essentially it um, to create our uh, PBR material together. Really, really happy. So 
what we now need to do is unclick on this and add our material to our sphere. Cool, fantastic. But even though the material is really there, it's looking really, really cool and really, really professional, uh, we don't have, we've got a slight bit of bump. It's not too bad actually, uh, but you we can add a different kind of texture to this. We can make the bump really pop out a little bit more like we saw in our preview. Obviously there's a little bit of shine or too much reflection popping off this as well. So we could probably go back into here. Uh, roughness is at the top. Let's have a look. Global reflection brightness. We can probably lower that down uh, a little bit. And then you can say, let's look at what the original was. Yeah, there we go. If we put that down almost to like zero and then global specular brightness. Let's have a look at that. Lovely. And hopefully that, yeah, we go. It's taken a little bit of that material out okay so uh you can also we can add to this if you wanted more of a jagged uh, kind of rock style and uh, what i'm going to do is click on bend and go to uh, displacer and then add with my displacer add that as a parent to uh, my sphere then on shading i'm going to then again choose just my displacement map which is there click open click no and then hopefully so there's a little bit more of a pop as you just saw then and then what we're going to do is go to objects and at height at 10 centimeters we can start to push this out a little more so let's try 30 centimeters and now so we're really getting some depth in there now and really got that texture going really nice and it's looking really really good so what we can do just to finish this off um, is add a physical sky, go to our settings. Oh, ambient occlusion is already checked, that's nice. And what we can do is if we just render this through, nice. So there we go, there's our kind of rock texture pop through. We can put maybe a little bit more reflection in there if you wanted to, um, but that is really, really looking nice. Um, so the second part, uh, what I'll do is create a, um, We'll export this off and put this into Unity. But thank you very much, and I hope this helps with creating either your levels, games, terrains, environments, or even your concept art. Cool, thanks.